Hello. It's uh, three thirty. Saturday morning. I'm on the docks at Great Yarmouth, well near enough Great Yarmouth, just round the corner. And um, it's eighteen degrees. It's quite mild. I'm in my shorts, and I'm. They very kindly stay in the yard last night. So I had a fantastic view, as you can see. There's the water down there. They gave me the code to the gate. <laughs> There's a shower. Toilet. And a fish and chip shop which they recommended, which I went to, and it was absolutely exceptional. I, uh, yeah. I'm through and uh, I'm gonna go and lock the gate up for them. So I'll speak to you all in a minute. I'll speak to you in a minute. Back again, my gate shut. Clean me move. Seems to be super manky. So, we've got to go a different way out than we came in. Because the road's shut, because of the uh, roadworks. Let's go, let's get out of here. So we came in from the right there. Down to this roundabout down here. And basically, just follow the sat nav. And it'll get me. There's only one road shut, which is, I find, quite amazing. Oh, look. Green light. There's my wipe, has gone. That's going to smear everything up, isn't it? is clunky. There aren't many people around at this time in the morning. There's a fair few different ways that I could actually get home from here. But if I go to Lowestoft and head down the coast and back in, um, that road's shut as well. And there's various ways across country that I can go. But I'm just going to go the way I came, really. This takes me, um, Sort of runs the other side of the rivers, or the river, um, west, and then I turn north to head back up towards Norwich so I can pick up the A. Uh, I want to say 47, but I'm not sure if that's right or not. I think it's the A47. Pick that back up. Otherwise, I'm winding all the way round the roads to Bury St Edmunds. It's going out of my way a little bit. And as much as I'm uh, not too worried about times, I'd like to get home. I've got things to do today. So 
sorry good people, we're going to be clanking through your uh, There's people still up, look. That's a small baby. Oh, they're doing naughty things. Oh, they just need to get up and have a piss during the middle of the night. <laughs> So we're now in Bradwell. The Phoenix swimming pool. Did it burn down at one stage? That's a bit unfortunate for a swimming pool burning down, isn't it? I'll get myself comfortable. I'm struggling. There we go. <coughs> I well, slept well, apart from waking up early. I thought there was blue lights behind me, but it's just the glow of his lights. time in the morning. Ugh. Come on. Oh yeah, buying a brand new house right next to a busy, uh, next to a main road. That was a good move on it. Well done. So I clanked through. Bet you're regretting that. Yeah, he's going for it. Came in on the A47, and I said, "Oh, I can see the sea. That one's a sea. That was a river est estuary. Beckles Road. Okay. Beauty yeah, of this. I'm in the morning. There's no other man. I can just take up the whole roundabout." Look at that. Left, I've got to go right, right, I've got to go left. Good arrows. This can't be still a 30, surely. I think it is. What's going on in there? Is that a farmer? No, what's in there? Oh, the house, kennels. I clean my lights. Does it? Does it show? I think it does. It's a narrow little bloody road. Dirty bastard. 
متخصص و نفع بشن I'm a man up last night, I said, uh, I've got two choices, I can either, I said, you know, you know, the beauty of being on agency is that, you know, I'm paid by the app, so, um, I'd have had a night out anyway, so that's, that's immaterial, the night out payment, um, and whether I drove back yesterday or drove back today is the same money, I don't get any extra for, for driving, running back in on a Saturday, Purely and si oh, no, no, like a cat. Purely and simply because um, you only get paid extra if it's a paying job. No, I, I'm all right with that. That's, that's fair enough because it's not a paying job. A paying job was yesterday. I've done that. I've completed. So this is running just return. So um, so it's just a flat rate. Which I'm alright with. So whether I did it yesterday and had a, I'd have only got. See the thing is, I'd have only got about an hour, hour and a half down the road. And an hour and an hour and a half down the road was where I was telling you there was no bloody parking. The laybys were really iffy. So um, it was better to stay where I was, where I had secure parking. Get a good night's rest. There was a shower, there was a toilet, and there was a fish and chip shop. And if I wanted to go for a pint, I could have as well, but I didn't. <clears throat> At one stage, I did think about it, and I thought, oh, I'll go and have a pint, and I'll go and have fish and chips. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna. No, nah, I'm not gonna. I'll get really bloated. If I have a pint now, I'll get bloated, and then I won't be able to sleep properly. As it was, just with the fish and chips, I was 30 mile on air. It's not 30 for you, was it? Yeah. I didn't see that. Could you all be flishy flashy at me? I was only doing about 35. Now I'm doing about 25.
bridge. Let's hope it's not too humpback. No, just a little narrow bridge. And there's a big truck coming anyway. <coughs> oh, I can see Bugmore. Two trucks coming. to see on oh, a coach a truck and a coach where's the coach driver going at this time in the morning what time is it four o'clock nearly Ooh, God. We're going over there big bridge by the looks of it around, I can't see. Tied in or out? I have no idea. I don't even know if it's... No, his house is down there. I have no idea. Oh, blimey. I've got rocked off the face of the earth then. Any of you lot flat earthers? Needs to be. <laughs> yeah, it's still a forty. say there'd be you know lots of nice views around here but I went because it's so bloody flat. You might see the odd spiral turret. That would be about a lot. This is a bit of a different road than the road we came in on which was dead straight. This is like oh we're going to Wiggly Worm way back shall we? It's like dead straight or like S bends. Romans didn't come this way. This had been some medieval peasant with his awesome car. <coughs> Pissed on mead. Wandering through the fens. Then number 30 again. Haddisto. Waveney Valley Village. Oh, sorry folks. Is a pub is open. The Haddisco Tavern. Huh? Cute. Maybe that was a pub there on the end. Sorry. Village Hall. Not too clanky. It's telling me to go down a B road. No, honest. Well done. <coughs> oh, 
will go and get to work. Well, no, you won't be. You'll be going to work in a box. Well, you'll be going home in a box. You might go to work in a car. You may never get there, my son. So we keep going to a roundabout, then we turn right. any faster, it's too bloody bumpy. Doing 30. I'll try and get up to 40. 50 even, blimey. Hold on to your ass. I'm gonna go. No. Right. Try and overtake now on a solid white line. You enjoying this? This is around about 2.8 miles. Go on then. You're itching to do it. And I can't blame you. I wouldn't want to be stuck behind me. Again, I wouldn't be in that such of a rush that I didn't need to risk my life trying to overtake, a, overtake an Arctic trucking on these roads. So if we go back into a 30 here, look, he's not, oh no, it's not, it's a 40. Go into a 40. Toft Monks? Okay, what was a Toft? Well, there's another pub there, what's that one called? White Lion! speed limit, you're having a laugh. Go on, you can do it if you want it. You can do it. You can do it, there you go. chips to 
over Norwich to pick up the A47. Seems a sensible offer, possible, oh, 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 sensible. Sensible thing to do. Was it the A143? No, not A143. reason so it could be a low bridge or it could be who knows that's the way I was gonna go follow the 143 See what's going on around you. I mean, that's be some views across the field set. Might be lovely. Might be naked women running free. <clears throat> of course, in the dark, you're missing out on all that goodness, aren't you? But for those of you that you have away, could be naked men. This is Norfolk Delight. the road safely.
<clears throat> Truck, always a good sign. An historic church. I'm not religious, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not religious in the slightest. Um, and I, I have respect for anyone who has, has faith, it you know, it doesn't bother me, but... point where you're is blind faith because then it leads you into all sorts of trouble. It's an area that I've, I've rarely, I've been through around here maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 times maybe, maybe more, but um, it's not an area that I know at all. See where people's gone straight on because you've got a job to see where the bloody roundabout is. Yeah, straight in there. back at the yard now around half eight quarter nine 
might go and get fuel. And I've got a piss about Monday. I think I will. Another, um, you know, that's that's two weeks I've done with this crowd now, and uh, if I was staying, I'll be totally honest now. If I was staying, if we weren't thinking of moving, I'd be, um, I'd be happy to work for these lot. Everything's been spot on. Work is straightforward. You're not messed around, you left your own devices. Uh, I'm lucky, I suppose, I know the guy that's running the show. I, know that. I don't even know what his title is. Depot manager, I suppose, traffic manager. It's like, he does a lot. I'd be happy to work for this lot, and I'd be happy if I, you know, if they said, right, well, you, you, you stay in this truck, I'd be happy with this truck as well. I like it. Yeah, it's got 500,000 kilometres on the clock, but you know, as you can hear, not particularly rattle much compared to some of the newest shit that I've had, which has been horrendous. Dragon. Let's make it really narrow and awkward. Yeah, so I'd be up. So this week's been good. I'm trying to think where I've been this week. I went in Sunday night. To, uh, oh, I went to Bristol. I went to Bristol. Then I went down to uh, Biddeford, and then I went back to Bristol. Then I went up to Warrington. Uh, up to Warrington. Come back down from yeah. Went up to Warrington. Back down from Warrington. Trucking for service. And had a great yarm of today. Yeah, that was alright. So yeah, no, it's good. Oh, another mouse. Yeah, so the week's been uh, two weeks have been spot on. No dramas, <coughs> that's what I like. There's another big lay boy. Yeah, if I was staying, I would be more than happy to uh, work for them.
scoot too much. Mr. Merck. <clears throat> Where's the witches? I tell you, we uh, we did a drive uh, rabbits. We did a drive by of a house in Scotland that had its own uh, graveyard. I think I did. I actually quite liked the idea. It was um, it was a an old graveyard, but it also had some um, Commonwealth graves that uh, that you looked after. And I thought I quite like that. I like the idea of that. You'd have some good Halloween parties, haven't you? Time now is 20 past 5, Saturday morning, it's uh, 14 degrees, still bloody dark, and I'm in my shorts. You would have seen in the last video, it sort of abruptly ended, um, battery went flat. I was uh, rabbiting on for nearly 40 minutes I think. So anyway, I thought I'd put you back on because, uh, well, <clears throat> I guess it's the whole reason why I started doing these videos to start off with is because of my own mental health, I suppose, really. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> there was a number of reasons why I wanted to start videoing. Firstly, I wanted a record of what I was doing. Uh, I think it's important for... You know, like you used to get a diary, didn't you? Well, some people did. I haven't. I was rubbish at it. But this I find quite simple to do. And it's nice to be able to look back and go, oh, yeah, yeah, I did this then, I did this, this, this. I don't do much of my personal life, but I've done a lot of trucking. <laughs> um, and that will change as we move to Scotland. But um, I was driving along. The music on Radio 2 was shite. I couldn't be asked to faff around trying to tune into another station so I thought I'd just turn it off and you sit there and you're sat, you're sat in silence and you're, you know, you're concentrating on what you're doing but you also, your mind wanders doesn't it and it gets to thinking about all sorts of different things and why it does anyway and, um, and one of the reasons why I started this this journey with video and everything was that I find that it helps it helps to I find talking helps me. I'm not a fantastic conversationalist, but um, I like talking like this. I can, I can, that are warm for hours. And I find it, it whiles away, whiles away the time. I'll make sure I'm going the right direction. Whiles away the time. And uh, it does me good. It does me good works for me and that's all it matters I don't get and, that, and this is some of the pros and cons of being a truck driver I guess um, loneliness I don't get lonely I don't I enjoy the company of others to a degree I always enjoy the company of the gorgeous giver um, I never have a problem spending time with her stay in this lane I'll just stay in this lane and but I do you know and I, I enjoy going out and seeing friends but I'm also I also spending time with friends but I'm, I'm also glad to get back to just being me again you know and trucking to a certain degree has been my no I wouldn't say it's been my saviour but it's certainly been I can get overloaded with people if you know what I mean it's, it's sometimes it's just too much too much noise too much too much, um, too much. <laughs> and being a truck driver, you sort of you you, is, you can isolate yourself. You can isolate yourself from what's going on, either news-wise or family-wise or whatever way you whatever situation you're in. You can you can lock yourself into your own little bubble and just um, crack on, you know. And all you have to think about is where you're going to park up at night and what you're going to have for your tea. And um, sometimes that's what I need. 
keep my head on in the straight and narrow. So like I said, it's not been a saviour, but it, it has been a a safe haven, haven in this topsy-turvy world sometimes. Oh, I've got hiccups now. <laughs> That's no reflection on, you know, my loved ones, but, um, Every now and again, before I started trucking, I used to have to get away for, for a weekend every now and again. Um, he's usually on a motorbike. And, um, and I've always done that. I've always tried to get away. Just You just need a little bit of U-time, don't you? Or just Kira does it. She goes on her U-times. And uh, she chooses to do it with friends. Her and her friend go away. And uh, I choose to do it on my own because I just, you know, I'm quite happy to do that. But I don't think there's any, I think that's healthy. I think that's a healthy thing to be able to do. And to recognise that sometimes that you need to do that. Rather than trying to battle all through everything and not really getting anywhere. And I think that's part of our problem as society is we, we, we tend to do that, don't we? We battle on and battle on because we think that's what we need to do. But you don't. You can stop. Stop. Chill out. Take some time out. Even if it's just 24 hours, it's time out for you. And if life demands that you can't do that, then you need to, I think in this day and age, you need to take a look at your life and go, why can't I do it? What's stopping me from doing it? Because there's always, there's got to be a way of doing it. Life shouldn't be this complicated. I had, a, I had a good, it was a, I can't remember what, there's a song out at the moment, I can't remember, and the song's not, it's alright I suppose, but it's not, but I did pick up on a lyric on it, and it said, tomorrow's never promised, too right it's not promised, you don't know what's going to be, so you've got to, you know, you've got to, you've got to give, you got to give yourself a little bit of you time, I don't know if that makes sense to anyone, or is it just the ramblings of a madman at five o'clock in the morning? Uh, I don't know. Ramblings of a madman. All ramblings. I'd stop it. I went, I went past some services earlier and I thought, so I could really do something to eat, I need some breakfast. All the shops are shut. <laughs> there was one that had a subway and had, had, had all sorts of Greggs in it and all that, and it was all, all the lights were off. Well, you're not services then, I really, you, all you are is a petrol station. That means you can get petrol, and as long as that bloke, or whoever it is behind the counter, can put it through the, the night hatch, Then you can have it. Oh, brilliant. I want a double packet of rich tea biscuits, please. Yeah, I'll just crumble them up for you. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, what's the world coming to when you can't walk into a shop at four or five o'clock in the morning? For fear, or the, or the shopkeeper going, no, I'm gonna get robbed if I open the door. I don't know. Well, you should put more members of staff on then, if you think that. Poor society shouldn't be so cocked up that you... That you're likely to get robbed. Your old mental health, your, your head, it's a funny old thing, isn't it? You never know what's going on inside it, do you? Or anyone else's. You, know, you look at some people and you go, yeah. 
And it's often the case, you hear these things, like you hear these stories of people going, oh, I've got to turn off in a minute, don't let me forget, keep going. Remind me, will you? Start shouting. Telepathy, backwards. Um, you hear these people and they go, I was only had an appointment with him yesterday, last night. He seemed on top form. Then, I never expected him to kill himself. You hear it all the time, don't you? You know? Yeah, we were only out. I, I, I saw him, he put on a post on Facebook. He looked really happy. Huh. Clearly he wasn't. Right, A11. Stay in this lane. Yeah, and, it, and it's... it's you don't know, so those people that you think are fine and dandy may not be. We can all put an act on, can't we? You know, we can all act, act, and everything's all right, everything's rosy. When we know deep down inside that our heads are about to explode. But it is the 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 the. the the thing is, though, is that you've got to recognise when that explosion is about to take place and do something about it rapidly. Because the only person that can do something about it is you. You know, and there ain't no magic wand. recognising that there's an issue and then dealing with it. And sometimes that's easier said than done. You know, I've been to some dark places. I've been to some very dark places. And uh, you got to know when you're on the uh, when you're on the edge. I remember it exactly. I remember where I was. I remember where I was. And this goes back to my other the conversation we were having earlier about religion. I was in a real dark place. I lost everything up in Scotland, my wife, my business, my house, everything I'd lost. Lost a lot. I came back down to England with a couple hundred quid in my pocket in the car. That was it, that's all I had. No where to, you know. No, nowhere to stay. Luckily, my mum and dad put me up, but it was in a box room in their office in one of them fold out Z bed type things, and it was fucking uncomfortable. No job, no nothing. And, um, I was in a really dark place. Didn't know what I was going to do, how I was going to do it. I, I had no. My relationship was in tatters, and I thought I just did not have it. And I thought, and I want, I've never been religious, but I thought to myself, I know what I do, and I see what happens. So I walked into the, the church door was open. I was in town, and the church door was open. So I thought I'll go and sit in there. I didn't know why. I thought maybe, maybe it's the Lord calling me, you know? This could be the turning point in my life. This could be it. So I went in there, sat down, and I just... I remember there was, I started crying, not crying, but I had tears in my eyes, you know? I wasn't sobbing my heart out, but I had tears in my eyes. I was getting strange, there was other people in the church and I was getting strange looks. I remember being conscious of, of, of other people looking. Now they must be all churchy people because they're in a church, you know? You know, you know it's, it's like they're faffing around with flowers and organising stuff, you know, I was vaguely aware of what they were doing. I just sat there. I must have sat there for about 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Maybe it might have been longer, I don't know. 
And you know what? Not one person come across to me and said, you are right, son. Because I know for sure I would have if I saw someone like that. And especially in a church where you're supposed to be caring. A safe haven. And once I sort of gathered me gathered me wits about me again, I walked out there and I went, well that was a kid waste of time wasn't it? And I don't know what I was looking for but I just said that, I remember saying it to myself and that was a, I was open for some sort of enlightenment or some path to follow or some voice in my head to go, well there was a voice in my head but it was my own. And that voice turned around and basically said, look, if you want to get a grip of this, you need to you need to start thinking about how you're going to do it. So I think after that I went to the pub and got pissed. But I did come up with a sort of conscious plan, that, you know, how I was going to go about making me money again. And um, I did. I opened up a driving school. I got a franchise with the AA. And um, about a week later I went and picked the car up. Got a load of lessons booked in. Started earning some money, um, and then I found myself somewhere to live, and um, I went from strength to strength. But the thing is, I had to, I had to go through that myself. Now, some people could turn around and say, "Well, yeah, that was the Lord doing His works in mysterious ways. He, he did all of that. He didn't need to speak to you." Yeah, well, I would have quite liked Him speaking to me, or somebody, or anyone. I could have done with a chat. stage I didn't know what to do I had no idea what I was going to do how I was going to do things what was happening whether I was going to stay down here whether I was going to try and go back out to Scotland I, I had no idea but I came out of there I went I went to the pub I did get pissed and um, but I came out with a plan with how I was going to do everything but I had to get to that stage to move myself forwards. When you get right down to the bottom of that ladder and you're knee deep in shine, and your wellies, you can feel the shine between your toes. Do you know what I mean? Your wellies are filled up. I like to think, and I, I hope that not many of you have had to go there, because it's not a pleasant feeling. 